everybody. Welcome to another Genie Vlogger live stream. On today's stream, I'm going to be building my family tree again, doing the Amsterdam archives as the main place that I get the research done from. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, for anyone who was on my Tuesday stream, you probably saw I was extremely tired. Still trying to <laughs> trying to catch up on uh, rest and all of that. Just been busy with a whole lot of stuff uh, going on. Um, but uh, let me see if I can adjust my settings a bit. For some reason, I feel like a little too glitchy. Can't tell if that's better. Fix that. I think that might be a bit better. All right. Well, Brian, hello. Howdy. Thank you for joining. Uh, Anna, wonderful to have you. Western New York won't be able to watch live as it's crazy day at the grocery store. Hope everyone has a great holiday. So you might not even be in here, but thanks for jumping in saying hello. Tasha, hello from Minnesota. Pedro, hello from Brazil. Stig, hello everybody. Usually from Oslo, Norway, but this time from Tuscany, Italy. Very cool. I guess you're on vacation. Hope you're having a good time. Uh, James Burton coming in from London. Weeping Scorpion here, coming in from Faroe Islands, as usual. Uh, Chico de Costa Sesueda, coming in from Vegas. Thank you for having, uh, for joining us. Um, Karen Dunbar, coming in from Oregon. Yao VMR, uh, hope you find Converso Ancestor Afonso de Caceres from Villa Vesosa, Portugal. Not sure if I will, but hey, maybe I, I, I will. Um, Alexandra Cruz, hello everyone. Watching again from Koblenz, Germany. Sharon coming in from New York, hello. Uh, Deza J, blessings from Toronto. Karma coming in from Nebraska. Old Cinderella Story from Bavaria, hello. We have Nick Brokema coming in from Groningen, uh, Netherlands. We also have Leslie from Santa Cruz and Sean from Ireland. And I'm guessing I'm probably going to have a few more coming in as we we get started. Um, but thank you so much, everybody. Uh, as I have indicated in the title and thumbnail, we'll be doing a lot of research through the Amsterdam archives, uh, which I've done a lot of stuff on already in the... Um, these live streams and I've talked about it in videos and such. Uh, but I figured, you know, didn't have much plan for today. Let me just build my own tree again and I'll actually make it focus specifically on the Amsterdam archives. So, um, we're going to focus on my, uh, my fifth great grandmother, Reynalda Montezinos, Reina Montezinos is, um, she's, mostly known so reynalda being kind of more of a dutch sort of <laughs> at least the spelling the r-e-i-j-n um so but this is my uh great grandfather morris right here my second great grandfather abraham third great grandmother reina fourth great grandfather abraham and then to reina montezinos so you can see where my Third great grandmother Reina, where she was likely named from her, from her paternal grandmother. Um, so we're gonna the first thing we're gonna focus on is finding some birth stuff uh, for her. So we have the general date, twentieth uh, of February seventeen sixty eight to the 9th of February eighteen thirty one, dying just eleven days before her birthday. Um, and so I have the two things pulled up. I have the main page of the Amsterdam archives, and this is just archief.amsterdam. I'm going to put it in the, uh, excuse me, in the chat. And then as I'm doing that, I do see we have gazillion here. Hola from Trasos Montes. Don't know if I said that well, but hopefully I got it close. And we also have VT from Finland. And yes, you are correct. Yeah, Reina equals queen. So. Um, but there's the, uh, there's the archive, uh, <laughs> link, um, for those who don't know. Oh, and we have CTC historian. Hello. Thought I'd hop in. Good to have you here. Saw you've been really active on the discord, which 
great chance to say if anyone's not familiar i have a discord community very active lots of people helping each other and just kind of also hanging out and chatting with each other just a lot of people with interest in their family history and genealogy so definitely check out the discord um but Back to what I was talking about, we have the Amsterdam archives, but I also have pulled up inventory 334, Archief van de Portugais Israelische Cemente. I butchered that, tried to get my best, but basically the archive of the Portuguese Jewish community of Amsterdam. And this has a lot, a lot of records. Most of the records we're going to find, and actually, I'm guessing this is probably too small, so that should hopefully, hopefully that's big enough. Oh, hey, Catherine. Hey, cuz. Good to see you here. Um, Everything's going well. Hope everything's going well with you as well. My cousin in many, many ways, another Dutch Jewish descendant. So uh, in the Portuguese Jewish community of Amsterdam archives, in these inventories under the administration, this is where we get a lot of the genealogical stuff. So let me translate this in English to make it really easy. So archives of the Parnassum of the community of Talmud Torah. Then we have two parts in there, parts of general nature, parts of items of special nature. And so under that, then we have administration of members, and then we have births, circumcisions, marriage, death, and registers and bundles of mixed nature. Now, there's a lot of other stuff that's very genealogically useful, but this is kind of where you get your meat and potatoes sort of stuff. Um, now, I'm going to translate back to Dutch because I kind of actually am more used to keeping it in Dutch. I've also been learning Dutch on um, Duolingo and watching videos and trying to trying to get it down. So, yeah. But um, the main thing that we're looking for now Raina's birth in 1768. So we're going to look into births. We're going to look under here. Now we have a few options. We have these uh, birth registers. But then we also have some of these other birth registers. And, and it's kind of a lot of the same stuff in just different ways. So here we have alphabetical by uh, first name. So... Abraham, and then it'll show the father. So everyone here, these are all the Abrahams born. Come on, come into focus. There we go. So we have all the Abrahams born 1736. And here we have Abraham de Samuel Mendez de Sola, born October 23rd, 1736. Then Abraham de Moshe Cohen Belafonte, born November 3rd, 1736, etc., etc., which makes it really easy to look through. Now, assuming that there's females in here, so we need to find the Reinas. Chill out, Jack. My duck is like going nuts right now. He's so bored. Jackie boy. So I'm just kind of moving around. I think I'm going a little too fast for it. Yeah. So basically, it's going by first name. Although here, that looks like it's... Uh... Yeah. All right. Let's try this. Reload the page. Okay, there we go. So we're trying to find Raina's. There we have all the Rachels. Okay, Raina with a Y. Ha! Huh, now there's a Raina de Abraham Hayam Nunes Vaz, a cousin of mine, but not uh, what I'm looking for. We have a few Nunes Vazes. We're looking for Montezino 1768. It's probably a different spelling of Reina. Or here we go. Reina de Rafael Montezinos, February 20th, 1768. So that matches up. But 
doesn't give us what I really want, which is her mother. Dude, no. No, Jack. Oh my gosh, my dog. I don't know if you all can hear that. He's like at the back door scratching. And it's not a back door where he can go out and go to the bathroom or anything. It's a back door where he just like goes out to like play or do, you know. Dude, you're so spoiled. You're the most spoiled dog there is. Yeah, you. All right. Um, <laughs> let's continue. So now I'm going to look into the other births that we have. And I think it's this birth register that gives us both parents. Does it? No. Isaac, then. Yeah, no, there should be one. Maybe it's going to be these ones up here. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, it doesn't always, but sometimes it does give the birth mother. All right, where are we starting at? 1737. So we want to jump way ahead. Way too far. Okay, getting close. 1768. Okay, whoops. All right, so that's the end of the year, and we're looking February. February... There we go. And we have the mother. So that's exactly what we're looking for. So we have Reina Fila de Rafael Montezinos, A or E de Hannah de David Ramos. So mother Hannah and her last name is Ramos. Now, one of the great things about researching families in Amsterdam and the Netherlands in general is the um, custom is, is that women keep their maiden names, whereas in like the U.S. and U.K. and Australia and all that, as far as I know, it's, you know, most people, when a woman marries a man, she's going to take his name and that's what she's basically known as. And sometimes you can find women using you know hyphenated or I, I guess it's more common now to have stuff like that but so you know with uh with amsterdam records dutch records it's really easy to find that so um hannah to david romas i'm guessing we're gonna get some hints as soon as we click in no nope. but let's go ahead and just add that in so now we've got that going on so now we've got Reina. So um, now I want to find the marriage between Raphael and Hannah. So we don't know exactly when, but it's probably going to be mid mid eighteenth century. And we're going to go with looking for what's known as a marriage bond, uh, an undertrow. Um, so what's uh, in part of what's known as the undertrow registers. So first we're going to move it by date. And then we're going to. Oh, there was nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see if we can find some Bavalking registers for them. No, they wouldn't have lived long enough. The earliest Bavalking registers, 1850s. Yeah, they would have been in their hundreds. Um, okay, let's try this then.
There we go. All right. And we're looking mid 1700s. Some sort of like a Raphael. <laughs> Let's just see the Raphaels. All right. So, is there any Raphaels that could be a Montezinos? I think that's early enough. Raphael Moses. Ben Snell. Moses Raphael Montel? No. The other option is to try to look for Ramos. When was uh, Reina born? 1768, so it would have been pre-1768. The marriage. All right. Let's look Ramos. Okay, it's got to be in there. It's just a matter of figuring out how to find it. So what is Because Raphael to Hannah. Raphael to Hannah Ramos. De Costa Ramos. Uh, let's do you know, I always need to check um, yeah let's do that okay <laughs> it's really nothing to nothing to work with here. Jeez. Montesinos. That's another way to do it. Um Let's try that. Hmm. Now, the other question is, did they get married in Amsterdam? Presumably they did. See, a lot of folks have it ending there with Raphael. All right, well, let's look in community stuff then. So we are going to look at the community marriages. Um. I'm going to need to do my heat cal conversion. So if I want 1750s. Need to be in the fifty fives. 
Okay. Oh, that's 1,800. See, the Katubas are cool, but they're, I'm not going to be able to go through them because they're in Hebrew. And I also have no clue when they actually get married. Let's see what's in here. See a lot of 1803. <laughs> Stuff is so interesting, but it's like, okay, stay, stay focused, stay focused. Um, all right. Okay, so what do we want to find? See what we can find for the marriage. We know Hannah Ramos, daughter of David Ramos. Don't have parents of Raphael yet. I do want other trees, but we're just building out the ancestry tree. And we're going to do it like this because content. <laughs> I doubt it's this Raphael Montezinos. Um, let me try this with the Ramos name. Maybe we'll get some more that. So we're looking for Hannah Ramos. Jeez. De Ramos Rasmus. Abraham Rodriguez Miranda. Now, there's a few options we could possibly go with. All right, let's look in, let's look in the Eskimot. Look in the Eskimos. See what we can find in there for community stuff. All right. We also need to find seventeen sixty eight. This is still this is the beginning. Okay, so 
pretty much right around where we need to be. So what I want to look for is in the Eskimop books, these are the community uh, decision books. And so what they have in here a lot of times will be different uh, lists of community members. And so I want to see if I can find Ramos in here. And that way we can just see if they are even in the community <laughs> at this time. Because, you know, if I, I don't know. It's kind of weird not to be able to find the uh, marriage bond. Granted, it could just be that the way that it's spelled and all that's just so weird. But, all right, so. Yeah, for... I don't know, Gazillion's still in here, but this is probably really cool to read. <laughs> I bet you could uh, understand a lot of this. But, all right, look for those community lists. Yeah, we're still doing them. The other option is go through like tax lists and stuff, which is the other thing I was thinking about. Was the other thing. I'm not seeing anything. It looks like, the, yeah, they must have, this must have been at the point where they started to really change things up. Um, okay, so then let's, we're going to go into the taxes. And who, uh, yeah. Do, 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 do. All right, 1756, 1759. Okay. I'm trying to remember how they have this organized. An index. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember how to go through these. Some of those ones where it's at the ends. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. This might be more of what we're looking for. There we go. Okay, so we're looking for Raphael Montezinos. Let's go 100, see where that takes us. Oh, wait, this is probably one of those multi year books, isn't it? OK. 
Okay. Okay. See Raphael in here. No Raphael Montezino is listed. What year is this one? Fifty four ninety nine. Which is about 1739. So the Montezinos line may not have been. You know what? Let me just, I'm gonna just kind of I just want to cheat a little bit. I already have it, I already have it on my genie tree. Uh, let me check chat too. Um, I can help with the Katuba. If I knew when they were married, we could try to find the Kintuba, but I don't even know the year. And I don't, I'm guessing they may not have been in, uh, been married in Amsterdam based on the difficulty in finding a marriage bond. Uh, hi, Eve. Wonderful to have you. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, if we knew the date, we could find it, but we don't know the date, and that's the issue. Uh, but that's where I'm going <laughs> to do my little cheat code. Hey, Charlie, good to see you. Thank you for doing that. Everyone join the Discord. And then good day. Good Friday is the Aussies call it. <laughs> Karma. Oh, yeah, Karma, you're, you're saying hi to Maven. You've already been here. Um, no, we, if we find the date, we'll find the Ketuba, and then you can read it for us, or we can try to find a Ketuba. So we'll have to see. Um, all right. Uh, Robles. Over here, Robles. Actually, you know what? That's what I'll do. I'm going to pull up the Dutch Jewry site. Let's see. Oh, not Fiel. Raphael. Montezinos. And he died 1776. Oh, wow. Hmm. All right. Well, let's try. You know, let's do this. Oh, there we go. There's no file. Now that is weird. Why is there no file? I'm going to try to, <laughs> but 16809. So weird. Why does he not have a file? 
I've never run into that before. That's so weird. Hmm. Well, we know when he dies, so, and Raphael Van Moses. Well, I guess this is also assuming that this is correct. So let's take a look in the deaths. Seventeen seventy six. Is that female? Doesn't say Vrow, so I assume it must be all. Oh, okay. There's two lists, it looks like, I guess. Damn. Ishak. Samuel. Moshe. Raphael, I'm looking at 1776, which would be what? 5536. Okay. <laughs> I guess it must be further along. Too far. All right, seventeen seventy six. Do we know what date? January fifteenth. Wait, seventeen seventy six is over here. Oh, these are all women. <laughs> Devrawen. Meet men. Okay. Het is mannen. All right. January 15th, Rafael Montezinos. We have him there. Just doesn't really give us a whole lot more. <laughs> 15 January 1776. Amsterdam. Okay. Uh, so my hope was that maybe it would give us parents or something. Um, you know, let's see if we can find Hannah. I 
Oh yeah, I guess actually we could go by just searching Ramos. Ramos in there. Let's see. Montezinos. All right, well, there's there's our Reina. Oh, you all can't even see that, I don't think. So there's Reina. Married to Isaac. Robles. So born 1768. Gahulik. 1798, married, or Hulik, Nam, Reina, Montezinos, Islox, Nam, Robles. And then here we have uh, the marriage date, 20th February, 1768. And then death. Wait, no, that's not death. 1798. Oh, oh, that's the birth. Ah, I was getting it all mixed up. All right. <laughs> I can't always be on point. All right. Well, so we have that. I'm still blown away that we just don't have the, 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 whatever. All right. Well, let's see. There, huh? what do I have for them? Because it's on a David. So let's look at just the Ramoses here. So we have a David here dying 1781. So that could be. Does it list daughter Hannah? Could be him, but oh yeah, here let me. I hate that it's probably not showing it to you all. Ugh, there we go. So we have this David Ramos, and we have these daughters born here, one seventeen forty two, one seventeen forty four. But neither are. listed there is one listed down here doc dr sarah is gahulek met simon van jacob de lao and overlaid in in the year five 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 zero so presumably one of these could be hannah blah, blah, blah. I don't even see any Hannah's. What do I have here? Am I missing something? There's no Hannah? No, that couldn't be her, could it? No, that's not her. What is going on? Okay, let's go back here.
It's a shame that we don't have the uh, old version of this website where you can do better searching on here. Mm. How could I possibly find her? Her husband dies 1776, and she's got to be fairly young. Because Raphael, did we have a birth date for Raphael? We had Raina's birthday. <laughs> did anyone give a birthday for Raphael? I'm going to do my cheat. 1739. Okay, so she does 18, 19, let's see. No. All right, let's uh, do this. We're going to go the long way. Nothing. Oops, wrong year. There we go, 18. Wait a second. Uh, ah. I think we found it. That's so weird. It wasn't coming up. That's so weird. Um... Good evening. Making any progress? Yeah, slowly but surely. I'm kind of taking the long ways around because I think it's a bit more fun for the stream. Um, did her husband have a brother? Probably. I mean, we're gonna have to. We're gonna keep researching and see what we can add in. Um, is this website in the Wayback Machine? Uh, hi, Matt. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the stream. If uh, you are who I remember, I think did did we have dinner at the um, I think it was the the presenter's dinner at RootSec. So uh, let me know. But uh, this is actually not in the Wayback Machine. This is a website called Dutch Jewry. Um, it has a lot of stuff in there. And yes, okay, wonderful, wonderful. I thought I recognized, thought I recognized the name. Um, and then uh, she might have married him, yeah. Yeah, very common to have the brothers married. Um, but yeah, so there's that's the website, Dutch Jewry, uh, also known as Akavoth. You can see here at the top, Akavoth. This site was run by some people who, I guess you could say, retired. Gosh, it was like probably five years ago at this point. And the website they used to have was way better. And... Um, when they retired, they, I guess maybe it was like the cost of keeping things up in a certain way. And so they unfortunately didn't pass it along to anyone to manage in any way and kind of put it in this everlasting state as it is now. But unfortunately, that means that it's much less, uh, it's not quite as good to use. Um, so actually, what I'm pulling up right now as I'm saying that is this, uh, this is one of the first uh, articles I ever wrote about genealogy and it was on the records uh, that we're going through from Beth Hyam. And so I have snapshots of the old website and you can see my really old computer. You can, I mean, this is 2011. So at this point, this is 13 years old, but the way that it, you, you, you used to be able to search it, um, you had a lot more capability with it. Uh, so yeah, here we go. So you can see search for, and you had multiple options and it was just much, much more, more uh, variety in your search capabilities. Uh, but now it's, 
basically just like this, but they have a lot of stuff on this website and it's for all families with Dutch Jewish ancestry as well as some other stuff, but mostly just Dutch Jewish. So Sephardic and Ashkenazi. Um, so in Amsterdam, you can see they have all sorts of stuff. Almost all of this stuff is stuff taken from the Amsterdam archives or other archives, which are all accessible online as well. Um, didn't Hannah remarry a uh, Solomon de Sabate Baruch found some children she had with him? Yes. So that's, yeah. So we just found the uh, burial card and we can see both marriages. So Raphael van Moshe Levi Montezinos. So that actually gives us kind of an update because not all the families would keep the double surname. Some of them would, some of them wouldn't. It was more, it was pretty common in Amsterdam for them too. And then, yeah, Slomo van Sabate Baruch. Um, so Sabate being the father. And then we can see the children here. Moshe, Reina, and David out the first Hulik. So are out of the first marriage. Up part Raphael. And then we have two children from the marriage with Sabate. Rachel and Sabate. So we're going to go ahead and put all of that in there. Um, so for Hannah, we have her now, this is Bagraven. So when she was buried the 31st of May, 1819, but we don't have an overladen date. So the date of the actual death. So, um, when it comes to these, usually it's within about two or three days that they're being buried of when they die but because of that i always put like i'll put may 1819 for her death not may 31st so may 1819 dying in amsterdam uh there we go and born 1742 most likely in amsterdam but we're not going to put that just yet and then slow mo. And then for the children, Moshe, Reina, and David, we have Reina. I'm actually going to update her name. Did we get the kids' birth dates? No. Okay. Do have to, oh, whoops. Who's the son? Sabate. Do that. <laughs> Try to fix our mistake quite easily. And then second or first February 1791. First Feb 1791. And then it gives a death date that OV overladen 5628. So about 77 years old, so I'm not going to put that in just yet. It's going to be Amsterdam. All right, and now we're going to put in Thun. Uh, we want to do Moshe and David, but they're going to be of Levi Montezinos. Moshe. So, okay, yeah, we'll uh, we'll find <laughs> we'll find all of it and get it get it in there. These cards are not um, are not the uh, most accurate, I guess you could say, or they're pretty accurate. But the best way to put it is there's known inconsistencies, and the way to understand these is the context of how they were made. These were made in I think the early 1900s. Obviously, you can see it's all typed and stuff, so it's going to be around when typewriters came in at least. But what they did was all of these workers at this point went through the records they had in the Amsterdam archives and created these cards for all the people buried in Bethlehem Cemetery. From research 
but through myself and a lot of other researchers like Tone Thielen and Michael Waz and so many others, but we know that first of all, there are some inconsistencies that are really bad. Like there's some places where they're giving the wrong parents in these cards. Very rare, but it has happened because a lot of similar names. Uh, the other thing is, is that they, um, they, they will reference the records that they're using, but sometimes they just don't know everything and they only put what they know. So you have here, they have children, Abraham, Rosa, Rachel, and Sabate. I'm guessing you mean, you know, uh, Rosa and Rachel are two different people. So we obviously have uh, Rachel and Sabate, but we don't have Abraham and Rosa in here for whatever reason. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I always like to, uh, or one of the things that I'll do if I'm really, when I go really hardcore into trying to identify every single one is going into the birth registers and literally, I mean, you go through the years and that's how I, um, for my Nunes Vaz line was able to find all of these various children born in the family that before I had done that, I saw nobody with these uh, children in their trees. Um, so like this, the, a lot of these kids of Jacob Nunes Vaz for the longest time, we only had Raphael. And then it was through my research. We found these others. Uh, for one, Jacob doesn't actually even have a Bethlehem card because to have one, you have to have been buried there. And he actually died in Livorno and presumably is buried in Livorno. Um, are there grave picks? Uh, there are some grave picks in there, but actually, and this might be a little fun to do. Um, I did a, uh, I, I was in Amsterdam last year in the summer, hopefully going back again at some point. And I did a tour of the Bethheim Cemetery, obviously, because it meant a lot to me. And I'm going to be doing a video that's all about the whole, oh, excuse me. Um, I'm going to be doing a video about the whole trip that I did in Europe. And um, part of that, I'm going to talk about the Bethheim thing. But I have a video. I took a 4K video of the trip and we'll watch a little bit, bit of it right now um i am gonna have to change some stuff around so you all can hear it uh could they have died young it is certainly possible that they could have died young but i will say that um they will list the children even when they die young uh, let's see. Did they list any children? So if you look here, um, do they have any that died young? Not really in this list, but you can kind of, at least they don't list it, but you can see like, no, that's the marriage. Okay. Right here. Z mo v m o v z mo v t o then Isaac Van David. So this is um see the uh I don't exactly know the perfect translation of Movito, but it's basically kind of like a stillborn child. So C Movito Van Isaac Van David. So this is David, the cards for David. So they're saying the son Isaac, which is probably one of these sons. Um, and the, that child overlaid in five, 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 two. And then is these, is these Isaac Vende's family, you know, is this Isaac from this family? And then, uh, Mogalik, which turn or Mogalik. What is the exact translation of Mogalik? Oh, that's right. Possible. Machine. Machine de Zun van David. Um...
So, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were we? All right. So we added in some of the family. Let's make this easy to look at. So we've added in some of the family. Not all of it's loaded, so let's reload. Oh, I oh that's right, I didn't add sister Rachel Baruch Blocka Blocka born to July seventeen eighty eight. Um, okay, so <laughs> we're going to watch some of this, but I'm going to have to change it so that you all can actually hear it. All right, hopefully everyone can hear it. So... I went to this and all of the people with me, except for this guy that you see here, this is Hans Straver, who was our tour guide. It, um, everyone else there with me were cousins of mine through my Nunes Vaz family. Um, they were all, gosh, how far distant are they? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up. So I don't think you all can see that. Hopefully you can. Um, So the cousins that were there with me were pretty distant cousins. Fifth cousins once removed. All of them were about fifth cousins once removed. Um, yeah, so just kind of a cool addition to it. <laughs> this is where we are. So, yeah, so he's showing a map. This is the cemetery, Beth Hyam Cemetery. So the records that we were just looking at before, uh, those burial cards, this is the cemetery where they're at. and so. I'll go back. <laughs> this is where we are. This is the out for the the, yeah, the chemical on the Uri. This is the museum. This, 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 this is the oldest part. Here it started in 1614. In the, the red the numbers are the years the first uh, the grave was on that location. So 1763. And so on. There is one location double because in uh, the uh, 20s of the former century, th this cemetery became completed. And then the question was uh, how to solve it. To expand in this village was impossible. To move to another place was not the wish of the community. So then they decided to cover a part of the cemetery with two meters sand and start a new cemetery on that part. That's only this part. Then the idea was that that should be enough till the 70s of the last century, but because of 4045, the, the story became very different and it's not completed yet, and it will be never completed uh, anyway. There are about 10, 11, 12, 13 uh, funerals a year. That's all because the community became, because of 45, uh, smaller, 70% of the population uh, was, was murdered in the, in the camps. And also because of what's right in this word, secularization, secularization, uh, sec, you understand, sec, secular, what's English words? Uh, uh, assimilation? No, 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 no secularization. Secularization, I think it's the same. Like, like you need to be like yeah. like no, be global. I think it's the same word. Yeah, 80% of the population in Israel is Jewish, but on a secular way. Oh, okay. That, that would, Not very religious. Yeah, exactly. 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 That's why they're, they're, yeah. All right. So let's get to. Um, mm -hmm. So he'll talk about this, but you can hear the mowing. <laughs> but basically, even though you only see a few graves above ground, the entire place is just graves everywhere. It's just most of them have sunk below the ground. Uh, Rob, 
did you check the Shep, the Shepenhuleken? I did not check that yet, but um, I don't. I think after we finish this video, I think I might uh, end the stream not too long after that. So keeping it not too long today. Oh. <laughs> so these are all my cousins that you see around me. They're all Nunes Boz cousins. And all of them live in uh, the Netherlands. Not all of them live in Amsterdam. Some of them. Mine family. <laughs> so everywhere, basically, you see that this this grave is right here. There's pro there's a grave right next to it, about the same size that's below ground, and so and all these just covering everywhere that you like everywhere that you see. Um, it's just they're all sunk below, and a lot of these graves. This is the oldest part of the cemetery, which dates back to 1614. The graves which you can see are graves that they've taken the time and all of that to raise the graves and do the proper thing to make it so it can't sink. I'm guessing it's something that has to constantly be kept up with. Um, and, you know, part of it has to do with, unfortunately, the cemetery is very limited in their funds. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, most of the community was murdered in the Holocaust and the majority of the community that now lives or, you know, the majority of the descendants have a very distant connection with it. Very few have even visited, very few even know about it unless they even live in the area and very few still live in Amsterdam um, or even the Netherlands. So, you know, there's not a big community to support it. It's, you know, it is a large cemetery. And so they basically had to choose which graves are the important ones that we're going to kind of keep keep up um can you do the acadians family tree not familiar with that family i'm uh not sure if that's uh if you're talking about acadians as in like in canada acadians or if there's an acadia family in uh the <laughs> in um this community because i actually feel like i've seen that name uh acadia is it one? Oh yeah, you all can't see this the way I'm sharing things now, but I just want to see. Ah, uh, it's the Akaton, or I guess it's Akathon or Kathan. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. I mean, if you're asking about Acadian family trees, or so, you know if I have a YouTuber where they have Acadian families or if I do a stream where I do, you know, focus on someone, but yeah. So, okay. So back to this, um, the, these graves are the oldest part of the cemetery. And I think he's going to, I think he's going to explain that in a second. So do we have the same door walking now on graves? Yes. Oh. Every, every end of the cemetery to our graves. Not more than 10, 15 centimeters below the level because the, 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 the water release gives antipression. Mm -hmm. So it's not sinking till New Zealand, only uh, 10, 15, 20 centimeters. No, the 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 grave is in Holland. Yeah. Grondwater is een apart begrip. Yeah. Uh, het is geen rivier die we die we onderlopen, maar dan is de vrouw die grond het water op hetzelfde. Bagger zou je yeah, yeah. ook grond kunnen zeggen. Dus, dus daar zakt die steen in, maar de tegenwaartse druk van water zorgt ervoor dat het niet 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 verder gaat. Kan je dan niet zeggen modder? Modder is Ja, maar maar uh, die Anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. If you're drinking coffee, and fuck her out. 
now we're yeah. not allowed anymore, but formerly the big trucks passing the bridge. Yeah. And then they fucking out to repair the building going like this. Oh, yeah. That's, that's how they got it. Yeah. <laughs> Pain, eh? Yeah. Pain All right. Is, so. Uh, not for the person here, but for us, be aware. Of... Gonna... So if you see a grave stone like this, it's, you can understand it's not Jewish at all. Because it's, it's, it's not simple, it's not sober, it's, it's, it's opposite. And this is one of the examples of a very, very rich, important uh, businessman dealing in sugar, tobacco, and, 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 and so on. Trying to find a specific spot. We, we walked, um, I think this might be it. Us? No. Jakob Sasportas. Yeah, he's. He was one of the. I'm trying to find um, the bedding of. We we saw Baruch Spinoza's father's grave, um, Michael de Spinoza. Uh, Spinoza. Uh, mm. And I don't know whether you know the, about about the, the fall of Messiah, sweet, sweet. Oh yeah. 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 But this is what happens if you don't maintain the place. So there are graves all in this area. Oh shit. When we are back in the house, I will show you. The, the, I, I, I just forget it. There are maps of this part of the cemetery, and then you can see every yeah. inch are graves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you, you, you told the number of graves. 28,000. 28,000. Now, we're, I think we're, we're about to come up. I believe this one right here that he's coming up to, that's, that's Michael de Espinosa. So that's. The grave of Baruch Spinoza's father, right here. This grave is of the father of Spinoza. Uh -huh. Ah, Michael de Spinoza. Exactly. Espinoza. Yeah, he had been uh, within the soul. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was banned out of the community? Yeah. He was not buried here. No, 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 no. no. Now the. These are all of my cousins, except for the, the tour guide. And uh, the one cousin that you see in the, well, I was going to say the blue shirt. They're all wearing blue shirts. But in the uh, black yarmulke, he actually was a cousin that figured out he was a cousin by DNA. So he did it through Y-DNA and through autosomal DNA testing. Um, and we figured out quite confidently how he descends from the family. And he actually descends from... Uh, uh, he's closer related to the other uh, uh, cousins that were in our group than I am to all of them um, because I descend from an Abraham Nunes vase and they all descend from Abraham's brother, Isaac, but through different children of Isaac. So it's kind of a cool thing. So it was like, you know, when I was in Amsterdam and when I finally put out this Europe video, which I've been, it's, it's literally going to be over 20, the script is over 20 pages long and I mean, I, it's, it's, it's going to be a long one. I don't know. Maybe I'll cut it into two videos. It's been taking forever to write itself. It's yeah, very, very, it was a very emotional trip. A lot of connections and stuff, but also being in Amsterdam, the family that's in Amsterdam mostly are the ones that, you know, they're there because they descend from the survivors through the war because the majority of everyone else in the family was murdered. Because it was bad. So, okay, I think this is interesting. Jacob Israel Belmonte, where did sixteen twenty nine? So this list that he has, <laughs> basically, before I went, <laughs> I sent them a list, or you know, I asked them, you know. Should I send a list of the graves that I want to see? Because I know not all are visible and I know that it's not easy to find everything. Um, and they said, yes, yeah, send you know, the list. And so I actually had a bigger list than this and I cut it down because I was like, I think this might be too many. I kind of wish I had sent more because it ended up being there were only two graves that were visible. The one we're about to see and then another one which um, was uh, this Abraham... Abraham Van Isaac Robles, 1802-1875, the son of Reina Montezinos, who we've been researching for the majority of the, the stream today. 
Uh, so we saw his grave and then the grave of this ancestor, who is a very distant ancestor. And I knew his grave would be, be visible because he was a founder of the community in Amsterdam. So very important. And they actually, you know, one of the older graves that they made sure was was visible. I'm with this phone. Oh, really? So this, me visiting this, this is the oldest ancestor I've ever visited where I know exactly how I connect to them. Um, and it's proven each generation up to Jacob Israel Belmonte for me has been proven. Yeah, covering it with very small sand. Maybe if you film it and enlarge it later on, you, you can read the text. So they, one of the things they do there is they put sand on the grave to make it so it's visible, which is kind of unfortunate because a lot of us that know about grave restoration and, you know, a lot of the things that are common that people do that unfortunately can wear stones away faster. Unfortunately, it seems like that's a lot of the common things done in this cemetery. Um, so like doing the sand and stuff, basically, you know, even though it's very small sand, my understanding is the coarseness of the sand, when you do it over time and over time, it just wears away the stone faster. Um, so that was kind of a common thing that they did was, you know, the, this grave and the, the grave of my other uh, ancestor that they'd found, they, you know, put the sands on so we could see it. Um and then when we were walking around, we also saw somebody doing one of those things where they had the paper laid down and they were like kind of doing the chalk over it. And, you know, that can kind of hurt <laughs> stuff too. Um, but then also one of my um, cousins in Amsterdam, um, she was talking about how her sister works in grave restoration stuff elsewhere in the Netherlands. And that I guess there's like, she has a real big issue with some of the people that are running um so some of the ways that, that they're doing some of the things at the cemetery is not very good, but at the same time, because they have such little funding, they're kind of forced into it in a sense, technically not all of the things they do, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, add sand to the list of bad things people use on graves. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so, oh yeah, so he had the, the cards we were just looking at, those burial cards. He printed out the burial card for um, Jacob uh, Israel Belmonte. Um, one, two, three, four. Did I help organize this trip? Yes, I did. So basically what I did when I was in Europe was I tried to have as many family reunions as possible in a sense. And his, his, his and when, wife? When I went to Amsterdam, one of my big things was I had to visit the cemetery. It's not in Amsterdam. It's just outside in a town called Oderkirk on de Amstel, which is uh, basically Oderkirk, <laughs> the, old, the old church uh on the amstel river and it's right off the amstel river and the way they bring the bodies down to the the cemetery is the synagogue uh was in um the city and then they would take it down they put the body on a boat and the body would travel down the canals to the amstel river down the amstel to the uh, cemetery so when i set this up basically i messaged all my cousins in amsterdam and said this is when i'll be there if you want to go, let me know and we'll go ahead and make sure we can do that. And they didn't really give me a limit of people, but uh, all the cousins that said they wanted to go came. And so, yeah, so it was, wasn't a whole lot of us, but yeah, so did that. And then I also, the Friday of that uh, week went to Esnoga to have uh, do, do services there. And I went with one of my Nunes Foz cousins. I buried... Yeah, uh, so uh, all right, we're gonna fast forward a bit. So, but like, okay, so kind of here, you can kind of see, you see on the ground how it looks like the grass is kind of dead here and there. Like, that's you can see the graves, and at certain parts, 
even though there's grass, you can see the outlines of all of the graves that are all around. Um, and as I was walking through the cemetery, especially this part, let's see. This is Litter Robot, the highest Another rated self cleaning litter box. That Another ad. Jacob is Del Monte. That, that part was the. Uh, no, no. Seven people counted in the 60s. Okay. okay. So it's a very large cemetery. And there you can see now that's not necessary. That's like an offshoot of the Amstel River. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In, in 1600, Amsterdam, of course, in, in miles was the same distance as today, but in those days it was far from Amsterdam because there were hardly any roads uh, between Amsterdam and Oudekerk, the, 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 the slums and, and rivers and, uh, and, and lakes, Slotermeer, Watergrasmeer, uh, the original names, so it was very hard to reach. And that's why most of the funerals from Amsterdam came to Oudekerk by boat. On this location, this location also exists since 1620. And then the, the last ceremony was in this house. And originally it was the, the Meteyar house. And that means the, 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 what you say, the, the ritual washings that right, uh, yeah. were, were, were done in, 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 at this location until it was not allowed anymore be, because of the Dutch law. And, but it's still in use, this building, for the last seven rounds around the body. I think it's open. Look at the key that he uses to open this door. It's so, <laughs> so cool. Inside you feel the Portuguese echo field. Yeah. And sand on the floor. Yeah. To me, it was amazing thinking of how many of my ancestors had been in this room the, uh, both the while alive in terms of, you know, when they were there for, bur you know, the burial of their relatives and friends and ancestors, you know, all of that, but as well, how many of my ancestors had been in there alive and when they were dead before their burial, because this, you know, as he said, the majority of the bodies, when they, before they were buried, they would go up through that gate from the river to this house. And this was the last burial area. So it was just like, you know, for me, all of the family history stuff that I had done, you know, especially as an American Jew, it basically was like, okay, 1880s sort of, you know, thing, um, you know, with, with the New Jersey synagogue for my family that was built in 1887 to Earth Israel, kind of being the oldest thing that I had ever really experienced, which was very cool, but it's like one very specific side of the family. Whereas then with this, this was my first real experience of like dating back to the 1600s. You know, this, I don't know exactly when this house was built, but it was built sometime in the 1600s. And the last ancestor of mine to be buried at Beth Hyam was my third great grandfather, Rafael Nunes Vaz, in 1899. So for 300 some odd years, my family, well, I guess, I guess. 250 ish or so probably um 
my family, my ancestors and relatives and all that had gone through this building dead and alive. So it was kind of like one of the, I mean, I guess the whole cemetery and the synagogue and everything I did on this trip was kind of like that, but it was just it, crazy to think about for me. You know? So this is probably a new, a new one, new one, one yeah. Here. Yeah. 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 So that those cliffs are over. Maybe streets are four hundred years old. Yeah. Wow. But they do replace some of them. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the bird or the stone or the wind. Uh, yeah. So a glass pane from built or made in the 1600s. I'm literally looking through the same glass pane that my ancestors hundreds of years ago had looked through. To me, I, I mean, that just, that stuff's just so wow. cool. In those days, they had, of course, different techniques. That's why it was done by hand. I'm going to jump to where my, we find. I'm Duke, and I know that finding the right home repair contractor. I'm Duke. Isn't easy. Yeah. And as you good kijk zit. Ik, ik zie dat je ook niet vaak yeah. loopt. Ik, ik zie het alleen niet. Ja, Then one is starting near the river. En Rafael Nunez Vas en Simcha Querido aan het 7 en 8. Our so, shared ancestors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Somewhere uh, between, the rock, in, uh, between the bushes. So the, the, those trees you see, that's kind of the edge of the river. So what he was saying is grave number one is at the river. And coming forward each grave, uh, my ancestors were graves seven and eight. So uh, Rafael Nunes Vaz and Simcha Querido uh, being those ancestors, which everyone within my group, we all descended from those ancestors. So they their burial is somewhere within that. Oh. Yeah. 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 Sometimes in winter it's it's uh, more reachable, mm -hmm. but year after year because it's not maintained, yeah, yeah, the, the, the lava, yeah. it's, it's become a sickle. We are very willing to make the forearms flight make under the we we have traced a few graves five six years ago, mm -hmm. but. but Two years later, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's covered again. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was uncovered. Sorry? It has been uncovered recently. Or... No. Uh, Can we do it winter, ourselves? In the winter. Yeah. Yeah. It took it all. It took it all. Uh, yeah, my, my one cousin was like constantly like, could we come in and do this? Could we clear this stuff? And I was totally with him. I was like, yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's have a family reunion at the cemetery where we clean it all up. We clean up huge portions of it. Um, in, de, in de winter heb ik hier wel eens schapen opgezocht, want yeah. ze liggen hier, dat zie je aan de, aan de yeah. kleurtjes, yeah. only a few centimeters. Yeah. So if you, if you can count exactly line 23, yeah. you know, number 7, uh, you, you, it's, it's rather easy to clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. but, but here after here it's becoming more difficult. Yeah. Okay, so this gives a really good idea, a better idea. Yeah. So like, there, like you see here, there's this grave. Then there's two graves in between that have sunk below, but then there's these. So everywhere the graves are like this. And the, this is kind of the Sephardic tradition of not, not kind of, you know, where you have that vertical headstone. It's that horizontal sarcophagus style headstone. Um, this is an example of. So, and then another area where some of our ancestors are buried. Yeah. Montesinos, mm -hmm. Isaac Robles. Uh -huh. yeah. So who we were just researching yeah. in this, in today's uh, stream, Reina Montesinos, yeah. she's buried somewhere in here. Daniel Espinosa, 
Henrikus Pimentel. Ja. Montesinos. Mm-hmm. Isaac Robles. Aha. Ja, ook Arons, is het niet oh, Somewhere on this field. Ja, ja, ja. So we were looking at a lot of records for the people he just mentioned. And that's, they're buried somewhere out there in that vegetation. Yeah, and the kind of Yeah. Jared, is the same tradition carried over as far as headstone from North America for Sephardic graves? I think it varies. The Sephardic tradition in America was kind of different because yeah. at least for a lot of other communities, it was very uh, it was very hard to get into the community, whereas in America it was a lot easier. And so some of the other communities, like in Amsterdam and London, kind of didn't look at the American communities in the same way, at least in the U.S., um, you know, some of the communities like Suriname, and Jamaica, a little different. Uh, but I, I want to say <laughs> most of uh, most of the like Suriname, Jamaican communities, that's where you see more of the more traditional stones. And in the U.S., you see them kind of taking more of a typical American yes, style yes, uh, with things. Yes, and, yes, I have. Uh, did, did you find names? I did. Some six or seven. Oh. Small, small example. Yeah. Be, be, between all, all, all of uh, wheat and plants, this is the reality. So the, yeah, we, we, yeah. we, we clean yeah. small part to show you what 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 is, what is inside, you know, underneath all the green. Yeah. 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 Station. On 1824, there is a reina of Rafael Montesinos. Who we've been researching. Right. No, now this isn't her, this is just another Montezinos. Yeah. Rachel, daughter of uh, yeah. Benjamin Montezinos. Oh, no. so, it's a woman. Yeah. So, so the, probably close family of mm-hmm. the, the Reina where you were looking. Okay, so this grave, this is Abraham Robles, the son. I found Afran van Isaac Robles. Yes. Oh. I'm going to have to mute myself. Hopefully you all can hear. <laughs> oh, wow. Glad to read. Here lies the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes, if you enlarge it on your computer, you, you can read the words. Yeah. yeah. This is my fourth great grandfather. Really? Wow. His daughter, Raf, uh, his daughter Reina Robles, married Rafael Nunes Vaz. The one that kicked him out of the house. Yeah. Yes, and then they moved to London. So he's the last of this line. Wow. Okay. Sorry, that was that was a call I had to take. Um, but hopefully what I was saying in the video was, was interesting enough. So yeah, so I wanted to show that. So, all right. So I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, got that out. Uh, so just to kind of jump back to just, just since we just saw all that, just kind of, you know, show it. So Reina Montezinos, Isaac Robles, and uh, the grave we were just looking at was Abraham Robles. Um, and then, uh, yeah, his daughter, Raina, died in London. And I actually, I I need to spend some time figuring out where she's buried because I think I figured it out years ago and then I forgot to put it down. And I, when I went to London, I remember I kind of had a lot of issues trying to find, uh, having time to go to the sea cemetery stuff while in in london but yeah so all right well i think uh i think that's gonna be it for for today did uh, a little bit over an hour and a half not too bad a lot more awake than i was on tuesday (laughs) so kind of helps having an energy drink um but thank you all so much for being here hope you all have a wonderful rest of your friday um won't have a new reaction out this coming monday but i will be doing a reaction uh reddit stream as usual and need to figure out what i'll do next week 
but I hopefully, hopefully, hopefully will finally have a new video coming out soon enough on the main channel. It's my Europe video about the trip. But like I said, the script, I'm still writing it and it's almost 20 pages long. So hopefully I'll be able to <laughs> knock it out quicker than I, uh, I've been taking so far, but thank you all so much. You have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll see you next week.